Hello everyone. In our last videos, we already completed the, the topics of objectifier, half objectifier, set data objectifier, right? And today we will start just the next part for the power supply block diagram. So today our topic is the filter. Filter will convert the pulsing DC to a pure DC. Okay. Here today we will discuss about the capacity filter or just like a RC filter or RC circuit. Before we start the capacity filter, first you need to understand how RC circuit behaves in DC and in AC. Okay. So today I will explain you the charging of the capacitor, discharging of capacitor, this kind of thing. Okay. So first we will start with the charge and discharge of the capacitor. Okay. I just make a circuit with the capacitor. You can see this is a capacitor. This is a register, right? This is a RC circuit. And here is a switch where we can change the position of the switch to charge and to discharge the capacitor. Okay. When the switch position in the left side, then this circuit will be turned on and the voltage source will charge the capacitor with the resistance R. Okay. And when the switch will be in the right side, at that time, the capacitor will discharge to the 10 kilo ohm resistance. Okay. So first, I change the voltage to 10 volt. This voltmeter will read the input voltage and this voltmeter will read the capacitive voltage or the voltage across the capacitor. Okay. So let's simulate this circuit. Here you can see as the position of the switch is in the right side, that means capacitor is not charging yet. Okay. So voltage source cannot charge the capacitor as the charging circuit is opened currently. Okay. So that's why you can see the voltage across the capacitor is 0 volt. Okay. And the input voltage is 10 volt. Okay. Now what I will do, I will change the position of the switch. We will see that capacitor will charge and the voltage across the capacitor will increase. Okay. So let's do that one. So now you can see that when I move the switch position at that time, you can see that the capacitor is start charging. Okay. And the capacitive voltage is increasing. Okay. This curve is just like V into one minus exponential curve. Okay. I will make a video dedicatedly for the RC circuit transient response, steady state response. At that time, I will derive this expression. Okay. But for the filter concept, you don't need to do this kind of thing. Okay. So now you can see that the capacitor is start charging, right? So what happened if I just move the position from left side to right side, right? So you can see that I just move the position of the switch from the left side to the right side. So you can see that the capacitor is started discharging. Okay. And you can see that whenever I just move to the left side, it's already charged. Move to right side, discharge. Left side, charge. Right side, discharge. Okay. So I will show you one more thing. So let's start from the beginning. Now the capacitor voltage is zero. Okay. Now if I move the switch position from the left side to right side, then the capacitor will start charging. Okay. You can see that capacitor start charging, right? And the capacitor charge to 10 volt, right? You understood that one. And if I just move the switch to the right side, then what will happen? Then capacitor will start discharging, right? Now you can see that the charging time and the discharging time is little bit different, right? The charging time constant is much lower and the discharging time constant much higher. Why? As the RC circuit time constant is R into C. Okay. That means if the resistance and the capacitor value is high, then it will take more time to charge. Okay. So for this particular circuit, you can see that the capacitor is one microfarad, resistance is one kilo ohm. Okay. So you can see the charging time is like this. Okay. But when I move the switch to the discharging circuit, at that time you can see the capacitor will discharge through a 10 kilo ohm resistance, right? Whereas capacitor charge through a 1 kilo ohm resistance, right? So the discharging time constant will be much higher than the charging time constant. That's why you can see that the capacitor is charging is so much fast, right? But the discharge you can see is so slow, right? When I just change the switch, you can see it's too fast, right? Now what I will do, I will change the discharging resistance to 1 kilo. Ohm. Now what we can see? We will see that the charging time constant and the discharging time constant should be the same, right? So you can see charging and discharging. 
So both the time constant in the same. Okay. What is time constant? The definition of time constant is the time required to reach the 63.2% of the final value is called the time constant. Okay. For this circuit, now you can see that the charging time constant and the discharging time constant is the same. Why? As charging resistance is 1 kilo ohm, discharging resistance is also 1 kilo ohm. Okay. So now what if if I increase the charging resistance to 10 kilo ohm? What will happen? The charge you can see slowly charging. Okay. And if I just move the switch position to the discharge circuit, you can see it's discharging so fast. Okay. So I think you already understand the concept of the time constant in a RC circuit and the importance of the time constant in a RC circuit. Okay. Why I explain this one as you need to know this concept for the capacity filter in a bridge rectifier. Okay. So this is all about the RC circuit charging and the discharging. Okay. In a DC circuit. Now I will go to the AC circuit. Here I draw the same circuit, but here you can see that I didn't connect a resistance at the discharging circuit. I just want to show you something. This is the input voltage you can see and this is the output voltage and you can see that input voltage and output voltage are exactly same. Why? The resistance I connect here is the 1 ohm. Why 1 ohm connected? As you know that RC circuit when I connect a AC source then there will be some phase difference and that phase difference is completely depend upon the, the value of R and C. So you can see that if I increase the resistance value you can see that there is some phase difference right you can see the phase difference is right and when I decrease the resistance value then you can see that phase difference is decreased okay. Here I don't want to see show you any phase difference that's why I just make 1 ohm okay such that the phase difference will be minima. Now you can see that the capacitor is charging exactly with the input voltage and capacitor voltage is the same as the input voltage right. Now what if I move the switch from the charging to discharging right just like here you can see when I move the switch from Charging to discharging at that time you can see that the capacitor value is kept constant right. The input voltage is changing keep changing but the capacitor value is kept constant and when I just move the switch from the right side to the left side or from the discharging circuit to the charging circuit you can see it will again follow the same. And one more thing when I just connect the switch at that time you can see it's charged too quickly. As you can see that resistance value only 1 ohm right that means the charging time constant will be in the microsecond that's why okay. So I think you already understand the working principle of a RC circuit okay and how a capacitor is charging and capacitor is discharging okay. I think you got the point right. Now I will go to the bridge rectifier circuit to show you the function of a filter. Here you can see this is a bridge rectifier right. So first what I need to do I just disconnect the capacitor okay and here you can see that I connect a voltmeter in the input and connect a voltmeter in the output okay. So this will be output voltage the blue one and the green one will be in the input voltage okay. So if I just simulate this circuit you can see that due to the practical diode there is some voltage drop across the diode and you can see that the green one is the input voltage and the blue one is the output voltage right and the output voltage is the pulsating DC okay. So it's clear I already explained you this concept in the last bridge rectifier video okay. So what if I connect a capacitor. If I connect a capacitor you can see that it's just it's just charge okay and after the charging you can see that the pulsating DC ripple is decreased. Okay, and this ripple we can control this ripple by changing the value of 1 kilo ohm resistance. Why? As I already explained you that in the RC circuit the charging and discharging is completely depend upon the resistance value, the charging resistance value and the discharging resistance value. Right? So here the discharging time constant is based on the 1 kilo ohm resistance. So what if if I change the resistance what will happen? Now you can see that. I decrease the resistance and you can see the discharge 
so fast, right? And it looks like a pulsating DC, right? Just what we saw without a filter, okay? So what I will do, I just increase the resistance. And you can see that now I turn to 10 kilo ohm. And you can see that the ripple is decreased, okay? So if I change to 1 kilo ohm, you can see the ripple is there, right? And if I change to 1 kilo ohm to 10 kilo ohm, you can see the ripple decreased, okay? And if I change to 100 kilo ohm, it's very close to DC, okay? And if I change to 1 mega ohm, and you can see it's very completely constant, okay? So this is the concept of the filter. So why we need a filter? We need a filter to change the pulsing DC to the pure DC, okay? Maybe this is little bit difficult for you as it is a full wave rectifier. Now I will explain you the same concept with the half wave rectifier. So here we have a half wave rectifier. Okay. So this is the output voltage and this is the input voltage. Okay. Now you can see this is the output voltage without the filter. Right. And what if I just connect a capacitor? Now you can see that. Now you can see that. This is the input voltage, the green one, right? Up to this point, capacitor is charged, okay? Now, capacitor start discharging and it is discharged up to this point. When the input voltage is greater than the capacitor voltage, at that time, capacitor again start to charging, okay? So, this is the concept of the capacitive filter, okay? Now, I will explain you with the theory. This is all about the simulation. Why I explain the simulation? just to show you how it behaves now i show you why it behaves like this one okay so now go to the theory so i already show you the behavior of rc circuit right so here you can see this is a ac voltage source right but suppose if this is a dc voltage source then what will happen if this is r this is c then capacitor will charge like this right where this will be the input voltage vi and this will be the capacitor voltage vc okay where vc will be equal to vi into 1 minus e to the power minus t by rc okay where this rc is the time constant okay what i explained you in the simulation okay and suppose this is a capacitor and you have a circuit for the discharge and this is the rt and here we have a switch like this what i explained in the simulation then the discharging voltage will be v0 into e to the power minus t by rc okay where you can see curve will be like this okay so this is for the discharge and this is for the charge okay so i will explain you this one now let's explain the capacitor filter before i start the capacitor filter I will tell you about the bridge rectifier, right? We already have a dedicated video for the bridge rectifier, but I am telling you again, just in a short, if this is plus, this is minus for the positive half cycle, then the current flow will be this side, right? And we will get a voltage like this, where here will be D1 and D2 will be conducting. This is D1, this is D2, okay? And for the negative half cycle, this will be d4 this will be d3 so the current flow will be like this right this will be d3 and this will be d4 so without the capacitor the voltage will be looks like this one this is the pulsating dc voltage okay now i will explain you what happened if i just connect a capacitor now you can see i connect a capacitor and this is the resistance r okay now what will happen first for the positive half cycle when for the positive half cycle this will be plus and this will be minus right then what will happen the current will flow from this side and this side as this d1 will be in the forward bias and d2 will be also in the forward bias and this is reverse bias and this is reverse bias okay this one and this one okay so this will be open right so the current will flow like this like this like this and then right that means we will get the output will be 
like this, right? Now we can see that we have a capacitor, right? And here you can see with the input voltage, there is no resistance for the charging of the capacitor, right? As you can see that we only have the two diode in the circuit. Okay, so the charging of the capacitor will be very fast and it will just follow the input voltage like this. Okay, so this will be go up to the max point when the input voltage will be in the maximum. Then what will happen? Now we need to see when the capacitor is already charged with the maximum voltage at that time this capacitor will act as a voltage source right and this voltage is plus this voltage is minus and here we have the voltage vc and now vc is greater than vi in this particular point right when vc is greater than vi at that time you can see and in this point this is vi right and this is vc so for this particular diode this point vc is higher than this point vi right and that means the voltage of the diode vc is greater than vi right so what will happen this diode will be in the reverse bias similarly this diode will be also in the reverse bias okay so now there will be no current will flow through the capacitor or through the resistance that means when the capacitor voltage is in the maximum in this particular point now the input voltage will start to decrease right that means in this particular case the capacitor voltage is higher than the input voltage in this particular case all four diode will be in the reverse bias right now we have the capacitor and a resistance so what will happen then this capacitor will start to discharge through this resistance okay so what we can see we can see that it will not follow the input voltage and this time will completely depend upon the time constant and that will be how much r into c right now if r is much higher then what will happen then the voltage will be like this constant okay now if r is less then we can see this will be changed like this okay and after that you can see that we already have the voltage like this right output voltage without capacitor so what we can see we can see that this will follow up to this one then we can get a again the voltage up to this one then again the voltage okay so i will draw with the different different color so first with this one and then start to charge again as in this particular point the capacitor is goes down and input voltage goes up that mean again vn will be get less than vp right that means the input voltage will be higher than the capacitor voltage at that time what will happen this particular diode will be again in the forward bias and it will again start charging okay so you already understand the curve will be depend upon the value of the resistance okay so if this is the r1 and if this is the r4 this is r2 and this is the r3 then we can write down r1 should be greater than r2 should be greater than r3 should be greater than r4 okay so how much ripple will be there in the output voltage is completely depend upon the value of the resistance and the value of this capacitor okay so it will be depend upon the discharging time constant okay so this is all about the capacitive filter okay so for the capacitive filter it is deal with the voltage what will happen for the inductor inductor will be deal with the current okay in general we normally use the capacitive filter okay so this is all about the capacitive filter so i already completed the transformer part rectifier part and the capacitor part right now i will start the regulation part the voltage regulator so next video i will upload the concept of the loading effect in that one i will explain you why we need a voltage regulator okay after that i will start the Genet diode as a voltage regulator okay and then after completing that one i will start the voltage regulator using the transistor and the genet diode both where we can get a high current voltage regulator okay and i will also give you the rps practical okay so that's all for today thank you bye bye thanks for your time please do share this concept with your friends and if you like this video please press the like button it is really means a lot for me 
拜拜。